Well, yeah, I was, you know, born in uh, Denver, Colorado, in America, in the middle of America there. A bit of a strange family. My father was a, was a motorcycle, uh, was a biker, you know, and his father was a preacher, my grandfather, and we went to his church, and this is where I first was interested in music, um, just singing, you know, a uh, very small group of people. Um, uh, usually no instruments, maybe just an organ or something, but um, uh, yeah, music for me started in the church and uh, it continues in, in the church. <laughs> um, yeah, I played in diff you know, different uh, kinds of music as a child, just uh, when I first heard uh, you know, ACDC, I think, at school, that kind of set me on a, on a path that I uh, would continue for quite a long time, but always having this kind of uh, gospel music, you know, white gospel music, not not so very soulful, which is uh, more like hillbilly uh, gospel music, and you know, of course, listening to uh, Johnny Cash and Hank Williams and all of this country stuff at the same time, and then continuing to move in meeting meeting people at uh, at school or wherever and being introduced to different types of music and. Um, always listening to really hard music and then really uh, serious kind of uh, folk music on the other on the other side and so uh, you know playing in different bands punk rock bands and rock and roll bands and finally with uh, a band just before 16 horsepower which was called the Denver Gentleman and I just played accordion and a banjo I wasn't the singer I just played some music and uh, this band uh, didn't play for very long and um, many troubles. <laughs> so I started 16 Horsepower on my own and uh, that was the first time for me to, to write lyrics and to, to be the singer and uh, um, then I met uh, the two French musicians that I played with. Uh, I met them in Los Angeles and uh, we, we all moved back to Colorado and started uh, playing and rehearsing there and uh, so just you know all of these influences as from a child coming together and forming kind of a solid in my mind of my creation of you know just what comes out of me so it, it's uh, uh, and still to this day you know I, I only I listen to you know all kinds of traditional music or whatever but at the same time very aggressive music and uh, so my world mixes this way I, I think, you know, there's, there's uh, generations of this, you know, in the 60s you have this movement, you know, kind of the folk movement, right, and alongside the rock and roll movement, and, and even before, you know, in the 50s, and um, so there's always influences that people that are mixing things, uh, you know, from long ago still, and so, you know, it wasn't something totally unique, but it was un unique enough, uh, especially where I come from in Colorado, there's nothing like that. And, um, you know, there were certain bands that played a, an important role for me, a, a band, you know, the Gun Club is one band that was doing that in Los Angeles when I was a kid, and that was something that I recognized. And uh, even uh, the birthday party, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, his early stuff as well, you know, playing with these same uh, themes. So that, these music kind of, uh, I went to school <laughs> with these men. As I got older, they would come by and, you know, like even the gun club, I was too young to go see them play. They wouldn't let me into the venue, you know, so, so I just did it on my own outside of, of the venue. But, um, yeah, I mean, each generation, like I say, there's people who, who become interested in maybe their own uh, folk music or folk music from somewhere else, and they blend that with other interests that they have. Um, so it's nothing new, but um, uh, I think I have a peculiar way of, of merging these things um, simply because I'm self-taught, you know, I don't know how to play any of the instruments, I just uh, teach myself, and um, so it has a, my own character to it, I guess. No, I never t uh, listened to anybody, you know, I, I mean, some, when I was, you know, when I first started, I played the drums for 
maybe 10 years before I ever started to play uh, guitar or banjo. My drums was my first main instrument and so everything that I play, I play with this kind of mentality, kind of a drummer's mentality, which is very rhythmic and uh, uh, yeah, just uh, that's how I, that's how I've taught myself. I don't know, I, you know, I don't, like I say, I, you know, I just make myself happy with the instrument, you know. I don't listen to other people that, like, like, I mean music, like, oh, it needs to sound like this. So I just like, no, it, I will take it and make it sound that makes me happy, you know, or whatever, so. You know, anyone who plays music with me gets kind of associated with the things that I sing about, the things that I talk about, and this is not always everyone's attitude, right? It's not their belief, it's not their. And I, I can see how this can eventually, over time, become an issue for someone, you know, like, because they're constantly being you know, associated or other people think that they believe the same or, you know, so you had that aspect to the, to the uh, separation, but also many other things, uh, families and wives and animals and horses, and <laughs> things like this that uh, occupied time. and. So there was maybe one year where we were not doing anything, and so I just started writing for myself, um, which is what became Woven Hand, yeah. On the first record, I played pretty much just everything, you know, the drums, the, you know, I just, um, not because I wanted to be alone, but just because that I was the only one there. <laughs> so I did it, but, you know, as I kept playing, you know, I, friends of mine that, uh, hadn't been able to play with me before because of 16 horsepower, you know, they presented themselves and um, yeah, there was, you know, uh, there's lots of good musicians in Colorado and uh, uh, it's, it's a good place to, to find people. Well, the, the name comes from uh, just weaving, you know, Native American uh, uh, weaving, you know, like a woman making a rug, you know, and um, that's where the idea uh, came from, of, you know, creating something from something else, you know, and making something that is just so uh, amazingly fantastic, you know, and uh, this is a spiritual reference, you know, to me of, of how we are created as human beings and uh, the care and attention that is put into what we are. You know, many people, they, they, you know, they think of, you know, praying or something, and, you know, you can say that too, but originally my intent was just yeah, just a, a weaving of, of a hand, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've played with many different, uh, we've done it in many different forms. Um, I've done it as a, as a solo act, yeah, woven hand. I've done it as a duo, just myself and a guitar player or an organ player or a drummer. Um, the main uh, part of the band is myself and Ordy Garrison, who is the drummer, who is unfortunately not with us at the moment for the first time in our career, which is, his father just passed away and he has many things to tend to at his house, so uh, we have another friend of ours that is playing drums for him and uh, we've had all kinds of different people playing with us, uh, you know, men and women, uh, you know, violins and cello and, and it's just depending on what the record is and what the record needs and um, right now it's more of a straightforward just uh, rock and roll. So. We're a little bit strange in that I mean, we're a bit difficult to work with, I think, for record companies because we don't, you know, there is a program. Yeah, you make a record this time of year, you wait this long, you put the record out, you tour, and then you go home, <laughs> and then you do it all again, right? Um, um, but I've never really worked well within this uh, system. So, you know, a lot of times we will continue to tour when everyone says, no, you can't tour now, you don't have a new record, you know, you have to have something new f to play. But uh, I think a lot of times the people who say that they don't really understand uh, the audience. I think the majority of the audience is, you know, they, they will listen to any song that we play, you know, because each song is as important as the next. And, um, but of course I try to keep busy and I like to keep creating and so yes, we keep making and keep going and uh, fortunately, you know, the people still come and so we are continue. I mean, this is, you know, they're completely two different worlds. It's possible to, to merge them, you know, and I think we've sort of tried to do that with the new album, but, uh, 
you know, other times, I, you know, I, I want to make a studio album, you know, where things were obviously you're not going to be able to do that live, you know, but that's okay with me, you know, um, it's not a problem. And I don't mind it being quite different live than it is on the, on the CD, um, nor do I mind it being similar, you know, it just depends on uh, how I feel at the time, I guess. Um, right now it's, we recorded everything live, so it's very similar to the live show, but of course the live show was always louder, heavier, more energetic than the studio, you know, it's, it's uh, sometimes it's easy to get too comfortable in a studio or something like that. I mean, not that we go to any big studio anyway, you know, it's just somebody's basement, you know, or something. But uh, yes, it's in my, in my thinking, it's, you know, in my, uh, it's rebellious, rebellious. Yes, it's uh, kind of uh, the uh, many different ideas about this. This is, uh, it's taken from the Bible, of course, from scripture where I, where I get most of everything that I talk about. <laughs> well, it's many times, well, it doesn't say refractory, it uses the word refractory, and it depends on, of course, what translation uh, yes. you, know, you have. It's an old word, people don't use this word anymore. Um, but it, you know, it's the idea, something that can withstand you know, the heat of the sun, uh, uh, is stubborn against the sun. I think that's the main idea behind this, and of course, this is a spiritual, the sun, the sun, and being rebellious toward the sun and being able to withstand the heat of the sun and uh, yeah the idea of rebellion against rebellion yeah. uh, well on, on the new album two of the songs we wrote together uh, uh, Chuck and Neil and I we, we wrote them together in the studio or just before when we were touring live uh, yeah two of the songs we wrote on the road last tour um, and then put them on the album. But yeah, primarily it's just me sitting at home playing a piano or whatever um, and then just recording on a little machine, you know, myself. And then I bring that to the other members and we arrange and think about it. There's certain people on the, that I know in the music world and some of them are from a more rock and roll uh, background and others from, you know, uh, serious folk background that have had a major influence on me and Musikash is one of these bands. Their music uh, has always had a really big uh, influence on me and uh, their attitude and the, you know of course just the sounds they make and uh, them as people you know I was fortunate to they played a show near my house in an old church in Denver you know just literally like a few blocks away from my house and uh, I had I went there and met them and um, they're you know of course so open and friendly to me and this was maybe 15 years ago you know and so I've had this relationship with them ever since and you know if if we don't come to Budapest to play they come to Vienna to see us play you know I mean they travel they it's it's amazing to me that they you know put this effort and interest in in me and what I do and I'm very uh, just overwhelmed by this uh, this relationship, but it's uh, and you know I've been to their homes in Tordash and you know listen you been there? yes uh, yes uh, yeah exactly and uh, listening to you know just the, the gypsy music and uh, you know it's it it couldn't be any more wonderful of an experience you know and so we continue as as often as we can to to play together to be together to whatever you know and. Um, we've played together in Holland a, a few times and different shows, but uh, yeah, they're very special people. I'm sure there is, but nothing that they have released, you know. I, I think there are some recordings, but I haven't really listened to them or heard them. Um, I'm not so interested maybe to have a, re it would be okay, but uh, I mean, to me it's just the experience and the, and the, the moments together and uh, um, even if no one is there or whatever, you know what's important to me, I guess. Uh, this record, the new record uh, in particular, we worked with a friend of ours, uh, Sanford Parker, who is, he normally works with extremely heavy, you know, uh, music in Chicago. And uh, he's a friend of ours and of the other guys in the band. And um, I've played with his band a few times. And so we had him come to Colorado and, and engineer and kind of produce his, his vision of my music. And, uh, Yes, of course. And last, the last record we we worked with Alexander Hecke from 
Einstürz und Neubauten, which is one of my favorite groups. Another one of the people that any time I get a chance to work with, spend time with, is a great thing. And we were just together uh, two days ago in Berlin, and we plan on making some music this summer together. And uh, uh, so he produced the, la uh, the Laughing Stock, the record before. And before that, um, I think I just did it myself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, different people with their different ideas of how it should be heard or how they want to hear it, so they add their own character uh, into the mixing and the, 